So today, just as a reminder, we are going to be sewing a spooky skirt. We're going to be taking a look at the bottom half of this pattern. And again, it, it does look like a dress, but it is a separate um, top and skirt. So we're going to tackle this today. It involves some flat lining, some other interesting concepts like interlining, which are a little bit new to me. Uh, but we're going to take a look and see if we can make this happen uh, in time for a really special event uh, in the park um, in my city, uh, actually a city next to my city, <laughs> but they're having an outdoor showing of one of the original Adams Family movies with Christina Ricci as Wednesday. And I'm really excited to see if I can take at least the hat, the belt, and the skirt um, along with just uh, one of my regular black tops that I have uh, into the wild and see if we can uh, have some fun and do a little cosplay um, for this movie in the park. And hopefully I get a chance to do that, but I only have a couple of days. So let's see if I can make a spooky skirt in a short amount of time. That's my challenge. We're starting the skirt and the very first step is to put in the interlining. So this is a part that's going to add weight and body to the end of the fabric. And what they actually asked is for you to use something heavy like a flannel for that interlining. So we're going to basically use this to make a sandwich. There's going to be a lining piece and then I have another piece exactly like this that's going to sit on top. I was instructed to baste so loosely all around the edges of this so that that inner lining would stay in place. So this is the one that I've basted all the way around loosely. And then what actually will end up happening is I will sew these together like a sandwich. And that sandwich, it's what's going to make the back side of the skirt and then the finished side of the skirt, which obviously isn't going to have any of the lines on it. So all finished, they're glorious, and I'm ready to start putting the skirt together. I'm going to sew the three panels in the front uh, to each other. There's a center panel and two sides, and then I'm going to sew the back two center panels together and the back side panels uh, to that. So there's going to be a total of seven panels all together. And then we're going to move on to the next step, which is starting to uh, finish the edge for the area where the hook and eye closures are going to go to be able to close the back of the skirt. And I look forward to making sure that this costume fits properly before I install those hook and eye closures. Right now, I've sewn some of the panels together uh, to create the front and the back. Um, and right now, I'm doing the placket, which is gonna allow me to finish the back seam um, where the hooks and eyes are going to uh, close the skirt. Um, this will kind of provide a finished edge and then an area that I'm gonna be able to sew the hook and eye um, closures onto after I'm done. So I'm just, uh, I've done the ironing for it. They wanted me to iron the seam under so there's gonna be a, a finished edge uh, that's gonna be uh, visible. And then, anyway, I'm hoping the skirt fits without a lot of adjustment um, because um, I, I know I don't have a lot of leeway with it. And for those of you who are in my place where maybe you're a little bit uh, differently shaped than what you used to be or um, you're struggling with some issues related to body image, just know that your size doesn't define you, whether it's your size in streetwear or your size in, um, in patterns, which can, which can be significantly different. And usually that number is larger, which it doesn't feel good to me, but I have to remind myself that I deserve clothes that fit well, no matter what my size is. And you know, am I trying to make some steps in the new year to, you know, maybe make some healthier choices or do some things differently? Yes. Would I love it if that translated into, you know, maybe being able to fit into, you know, some sizes that I haven't fit into in a while? I would have to say, honestly, I do, but I also have to make sure that it doesn't go so far as to say that 
you know, I'm not happy with who I am now or that I'm somehow undeserving of beautiful clothes and beautiful things because I'm not the size that I used to be or I'm not the size that other people think that I should be. So I guess what I'm really trying to say is that no matter what size you are right now, you also deserve clothes that fit and you also deserve beautiful things and that you're not defined by your size either. So love the body that you're in. And I look forward to all of us having a really great new year where we feel good in ourselves and in the skin that we're in. And I am using, I'm using a little, uh, what we call a leader so that uh, when I start sewing, I sew a little bit onto the leader first and then that, that kind of allows the needle to go through the fabric and to stop the tangles. Um, I noticed it was a problem because, as you can see, I got a whole lot of tangly thread wound up in the uh, front of my little placket. That's annoying. I don't like that. Um, so I'm going to use a leader and see if that helps. Uh, that's a, a trick I learned from quilting, uh, which I enjoy. That was my project that I learned to do during the global shutdown that we had. <laughs> I decided I was going to learn to quilt. I've sewn my whole life, but never have I quilted until that time. And I learned a lot. And most of what I learned, I learned from YouTube. So it kind of gave me a love for how you can learn to do something. You can share a skill over this platform. That helped so much. The thread didn't tangle, didn't cause the material to bunch a lot better. If you're having a, an issue with um, the edge of your fabric just kind of starting to crumble as soon as you put the, or crumple I should say, under the uh, presser foot, try using a leader and try using something that's a pretty substantial fabric. This one was a little bit of that scrap that I had from the lining. It's a really good use of scrap. And then you just clip it off at the end. And take a look at that. So much better. It did not. Anyway, I'm going to go flip this and iron it. That way I can put the placket onto the skirt. So here's my back placket. It's been ironed and it's been flipped. And it's got those finished edges so that I'm going to be able to apply it to the open space in my two back panels. And it's going to provide a nice place for me to attach those hook and eyes that are going to finish the skirt. So now I've pinned the placket down to the opening of the skirt, making sure I'm on the right side of the fabric facing up. Really, really beautiful. And an added benefit, it's going to be really, really sturdy. Now the pattern told me just to turn under the other side. However, I really liked how finished the placket made that side look. So I decided that I was gonna make a little bit of bias binding and I was actually going to finish that edge. We're officially at the point where we're sewing the front and the back of the skirt together. And I'm pretty excited about this because it represents one of the final steps before we put the waistband on and before we finish the hem. So it's really coming together. I love the weight of it. I love the way the fabric feels and I'm so pleased with how it reacts to the light. So I'm getting really excited to see this made. So let's do it. So I've been working through the steps on this dress. I've gotten all the panels sewn together. I've gotten the back placket completed and I've sewn the front to the back of the dress. And so now I'm putting on the waistband which is the last part that I think I'm going to do tonight um, because I want to let the dress actually hang up um, in its finished state for at least one day um, before I put the hem binding on it. And the reason for this is, is that gravity helps dresses that have some elements of bias cut to them, which we've got a little bit um, of, of not cut on the grain fabric panels in here. It helps those types of fabrics to settle out and so you get a better idea of how the dress is going to hang. So I'm going to sew the waistband on 
and then I'm going to hang it up overnight so that gravity can do its magic and hopefully give me the best version um, I can showing where the, the actual hemline is going to land. I'm happy because I fitted it to my body and I feel good about where it fits. It's comfortable. It's not too tight, um, but it, it has the shape that I'm looking for. So I'm really excited about that. I'm just going to do a little bit of sewing on this waistband so that I can prepare for the hem tomorrow. In addition to the hem binding tomorrow, I'm also going to be applying some of that beautiful trim. I have gone ahead and done a simple way of finishing all the inside seams. I have just done uh, what they call pinking, which is a special kind of scissor and it has uh, blades that look like a kind of a jagged tooth and what I do is I just open that up and so it helps it from uh, fraying if there was a fabric that was a little more fragile a little more loosely woven I would probably not be able to get away with this kind of um, finishing on the inside but it's actually a really common historical technique and for this type of fabric that's tightly woven and you know isn't particularly friable it works great so I'm just taking a minute to sew on the waist binding. I've put one layer of interfacing and one layer of lining and then the actual um, waistband itself. And I, similarly to how we did the placket, we iron over one edge so that it's gonna be finished. I'm sewing one edge and then I'm gonna flip it over so that it's a finished edge. And then I'm I've got a couple of options as I flip the waistband and finish the back edge uh, to the wrong side of the fabric. I could hand stitch it or I could top stitch it. Um, hand stitching would just be, you know, sewing only the underside of the fabric so that it wouldn't be seen from the front side, uh, but you would be able to see all the stitches on the underside of the fabric. I could do that. I also could top stitch which means that I would go right along the line of where the waistband is attached to the skirt um, and I would sew so that it would capture the entire um, the entire waistband and skirt top and the finishing back side of the waistband. I might do that. It just depends on how the material cooperates because I've got a lot of thickness there. So we're going to see what happens. I may choose to do that. I may not. So I did choose to top stitch the waistband onto the skirt and it, as you can tell it made a really nice finished edge on both sides of the fabric and it's also feels really strong and stable so I'm very happy with that choice and now I'm just going to sew down the trim that I pinned and basted onto the placement lines indicated by the pattern so it um, it told me on each pattern piece exactly where I would be placing them one thing that I have learned with synthetic trims, and it's something that works with ribbon or anything else that's not a, a natural fiber or cotton, is that you can use in an outdoor space where you know, you're not gonna be exposing yourself um, to uh, a lot of chemicals. You can take a lighter and burn the edges to keep it from fraying, and I did that. Now to sew the bias binding onto the bottom of the skirt. Now, to be honest, I have done a lot of work with this bias binding already. I have had to iron it in the way that's prescribed by the pattern so that it gets all of those folds in there. It's basically like ironing it in half and then in half again so that it becomes this nice little pocket that's going to envelop your seam. But the other thing that I have done is I have gone and trimmed around the bottom of this hem already to make sure that it's the right length that I needed and that it's a smooth edge um, for finishing this because I don't want big chunks of fabric hanging down here because when I go to enclose it and make that little pocket, it's not going to work. It's not gonna close completely. So I'm gonna sew this down 
with the right sides touching, the shiny side of the satin touching. Also remember the step of the binding where I was cutting it out and I cut it double rather than cutting it out individually. I found out that that actually wasn't a great shortcut because I ended up with the kind of the angular ends where it comes together. They didn't actually mesh well. So in hindsight, I would advise that you cut them out individually. It wasn't a hard uh, thing to correct though. All I needed to do was to uh, fix the angle. The you know the whole rest of the piece was just fine. So now I'm just going to take some time and flip this um, binding over and around and make sure that I have it exactly where I want it to be and I'm going to sew it down from the other side so that we have that beautiful finished edge. So we sewed the spooky skirt, now we're on our way to spooky movie night out in um, our local uh, city park. Uh, they're going to be showing the original version of the Addams Family made famous by Christina Ricci, lovely, beautiful, iconic. And uh, we chose some looks inspired by uh, her. Although I think I look a little more Morticia tonight. And uh, my sister, Jill, she looks a lot more like uh, Wednesday. But we're going to have some fun and uh, show you the setup here in the park. So the reactions have been mixed so far. Uh, we've been uh, on our way to the venue and we had a, uh, a screaming teenage fan almost accost uh, my sister uh, screaming very inappropriate things. Uh, so we're just going to try to get to the venue without any further harassment. Here we are in the park, taking the costumes out in the wild. 